white people in America and white people in Britain are currently fighting over who has the better Chinese food. Listen, man, you cannot make this up. This is a TikTok beef between mostly white American TikTokers and white British TikTokers over who has better Chinese takeout food or as they would say in England, Chinese takeaway, or I'm having a Chinese tonight. Yeah, we're not talking about super authentic Chinese food. We are talking about, you know, Americanized Chinese food, aka the Panda Express style versus the British version of it. And it looks quite different. So we're going to go into the comment section. We're going to talk about what people are saying because it's kind of turning out to be like some proxy of like some futuristic, like revolutionary war here. But then also, it also uh, is just talking about like, why does British Chinese food look different? Because it kind of comes from like a different place, maybe. So make you like subscribe and turn on your notifications you guys know hot pop boys we're breaking everything down that's asian from silly to serious andrew this would probably fall under silly but enough british people feel pressed andrew that they're writing really long articles about it americans are horrified at what us british people call chinese food why are all these americans missing both the history and the flavor of the british chinese food oh i love it man the british they can always bring up the history because they're like yeah okay so you're speaking all language and then you want to come Come back and <laughs> diss us, even though you're still sleeping on a queen-size mattress. <laughs> oh, hail the queen. All right, um, so, but before I walk in, we're not going to do accents the whole video. And we're not just here to make fun of British people, obviously, being Americans. However, no, let's get into it. We, I mean, we've got to talk about it. we got to take a look at this. This is a very viral tweet, Andrew. This battle, by the way, is going on on all platforms. It started on TikTok. It went to Instagram. It went to Twitter. And now it's on Reddit, Andrew. This, this person said... Just found out what British call Chinese food at a loss for words. And then, of course, as you can see here, Andrew, there's a lot of curry sauce on French fries. It does look different. I'm not going to say one of these plates doesn't look that bad, but I'll say this right off the bat. Obviously, a lot of French fries, lots of curry sauce smothering everything, even the, the lo mein. And then there's these chicken balls where they do look like chicken chunks of like sweet and sour chicken, but they're a little bit more circular. So I don't know if they're made to look like balls or not. <laughs> okay, look at this one over here. They've got fried seaweed as a topping, almost like some furukake. Some of this, like I said, doesn't look look that bad but i heard the curry sauce is very gravy like and it's not that spicy and not that flavorful i don't know well a lot of americans were getting at the british tiktokers saying what why do you guys just fry everything with no seasoning and then you just throw sauce on everything and everything's beige anyway you know what let's just play a few of the tiktoks creators in the uk have taken tiktok by storm with their chinese takeout orders the uk must have a universal menu for their chinese takeout because Every single person on this platform from the UK that has posted videos of their Chinese takeout, it's these same exact things. Did anyone order a Chinese? Got a Chinese tonight. I've been craving a Chinese for so long. Good does that look? Oh my God, I'm absolutely starving and I'm hungover today as well. I don't know how I've managed to go to a christening. Host pick a minds to dish out my crispy beef. Mm. Sweet and sour on first. Stunning. And curry sauce. Oh my God, I am so excited. Fancy everyone and everyone goes around and says, and this is how British people say it. I fancy an Italian. I fancy a Turkish. I fancy a kebab. I fancy an Indian. I fancy a chippy. Real quick, guys, we got a word from our sponsor, a brand new chili oil that is debuting at the end of this month called Sma La that is going to come kicking in the door at a Woo! game. We are very excited to announce that actually it is our chili oil. We made it. Uh, we've been working with a professional kitchen over the past year. If you guys follow us on social media, we've been kind of teasing it a little bit just to prove to you that we've been working on it. Here are some sample bottles of different chili iterations and versions that we've had. So trust me, guys, we've been working hard on this. Uh, it's very delicious. We stand by it. It's going to release uh, very, very soon. So if you are interested to hear more about it and you want to know when it releases and you want to have a small discount when you order it, please click on the link down below and fill out that Google form. Um, hit us with your email. It has also some other questions. It takes like 
Two minutes. Long story short, guys, I know that chili oils are trending right now. There's a lot of them out on the market. Some of them are old school. Some of them are new school. Believe me, we did the research. We spent the time. We spent the money. Obviously, here's La Gamma. This is a chili infused olive oil. This is a Calabrian chili oil. This is, you know, your favorite brand X here. We've bought it. We've tried it. And I'm very confident to say Smala is absolutely something that is not available on the marketplace right now. It is going to be a fusion of East and West. We work with a great... Italian master chef to come up with the recipe it's going to be good all right everybody again click on that link down below if you guys are interested and you want to hear more about it and you want to be the first to hear the news when it releases thank you so much put it on your British Chinese food back to the video Long story short, Britain has actually had Chinese food for 120 years because there was a lot of uh sailing back and forth between Britain and Hong Kong but it didn't become popular until 1970. It's gone through a few iterations there, but it has gone through less evolutionary phases than Chinese food in the US. So long story short, it's about 20 to 30 years behind. And that is evidenced by the funny looking beige fried bulb photos. You know, well, like some Chinese food in America looked like that in the Midwest. 20 to 30 years ago. No, I mean, I think if you go to certain corners of Tennessee, Alabama, or Wichita, Kansas, the Chinese food probably somewhere in that yeah, town still looks can look 80% like that, like that I yeah, would say. Maybe 90%. It, it, you know, the food is not really looking like that in the big cities. Um, but I will say this, David. The curry sauce... Do we know if the curry sauce comes from like the Hong Kong Macau side or is it coming from the Indian influence because there's a lot of Indians in Britain? So I did a little bit of Reddit research. This is unconclusive like scientifically, but it looks like the desire for the curry sauce comes from their consumption of Indian food. Indian food in the UK is considered very good, better than the US, okay. but Chinese food, obviously not so much. However, so the desire for the curry came from the Indian side, but the actual curry itself is more of a perk uh, Portuguese Macau HK style. Mm. And I'm not going to lie, guys, just based on the numbers, there are way more Chinese people in America than there are in the UK. So obviously, I don't know. The Chinese food is probably better in the US. By the way, let me give the British props on one thing. These tiu yim shu tiu, these uh, salt and pepper fries from oh. some of the spots with the onion, green scallions, those look good. That kind of does look good. All anyway, right. let's get into the comments section, guys. You know, we got culture wars. Somebody said, can you believe they call this Chinese food? And the British uh, shot back, can you believe that Americans call this Italian food? Because I guess the Italian food in the UK might be more authentic. I'm not sure. The culture wars of America. Somebody said Panda Express has more variety than the entire UK put together. Yep. Panda Express is delicious and still ran by Chinese people. Remember that. Of course, some people, you know, shot back with some dark at the U.S. due to the mass shootings and things like that. And somebody said, well, at least our schools don't get shot up, you stupid American. And then the, uh, Americans were like, why do you guys say Chinese like it, you're saying Chinese? <laughs> like you're saying Indian chai tea with your knee. They also, Chinese. This is a really interesting comment. Somebody said, I feel like this is a lot of Northern England, Scottish Chinese. You know, here in London, we're far more cultured and we've moved past this phase. These people are lower class and from the countryside. <laughs> that is their takeaway order. It's not what we would eat in London. Wow, you British elitist. I so will classist. Just, I mean, I will say Chinese takeaway almost in any city is considered more cheaper food. So it's going to be for more for people who know need to eat it yes of course there are nicer chinese restaurants especially in london and especially in any big city pretty much that's metropolitan there is going to be very good chinese food but it's going to be more expensive yeah and a renowned food site actually said uh in the u.s we enjoy the aromatics of garlic ginger soy sauce pepper in our meat and side dishes when it comes to chinese food the more garlic the better however in england they do not enjoy savory spicy and sweet sour sauces, all multi-layered. They like takeaway containers filled with vinegar, sweet flavors, and a thick curry sauce with a gravy-like texture. Surprisingly, British do like vinegar because, like, they always have salt and vinegar chips, and then they put the vinegar on the on the fish. And they also and put chips. the malt on the... Yeah, malt, you can't uh, even get that in American fish Yeah, spots. that's not a thing in America, yeah. Somebody said, uh, well, you know, you have to understand that a lot of poor people from Guangdong province went over in the late 1800s all throughout the 1900s, and that is the core basis for British Chinese food. Obviously, in America, Andrew, we do also have a Toysan immigration that uh, came to set American Chinese food, but there was also Taiwanese people. There was Fujianese mm -hmm. people. There was like... Um, 
I guess a lot of people from a lot of different parts of China. But I, I think ultimately the food looks different because it is adapted to the British taste buds and British food and taste buds are a little bit different than America, seeing that America actually has way more immigrants and way more different ethnic influences. All they want to do is eat them boiled peas over there, them no. boiled peas and put beans on toast, man. This is where like the rednecks of America can look at the British and be like, hey man, listen, come on, man. We got some Native American influence. We got the Italians. We got the Irish. We got the Iranians. We got the... Somebody said, man, thinking about it, I've never even seen a British person eat a vi single vegetable in my life. They don't even eat crab rangoons over there, man. What's going on? Yo, the peas and carrots, crazy. Of course, the British people were defending themselves, Andrew. Ordering greens from a Chinese takeaway is the same as ordering a salad from McDonald's. You just don't do it. Yeah. Um, long story short, man, Andrew, people were getting at each other. It got to school shootings. People are talking about preservatives in the food. Some people said, man, this doesn't look appealing at all. British food is just really bland. They make sure their Chinese food is bland. Somebody said, bro, it looks all soggy. Their whole country is soggy. And people yeah. were like, oh, why do you guys even call it French fries? It has nothing to do with the French. And then, of course, Americans, well, that's just what we call them. Well, we invented the language. Well, we mastered it. Yeah, I think, David, all in all, this kind of boils down to the fact that whenever Chinese people went to a different country or even a different city, they basically, in order to sell the food in high volume, adapted flavors and customized the flavors and localized the flavors to the taste of the people. I heard that there are either even peanut butter filled dumplings over in Tennessee somewhere because just Tennessee people, they don't just want pork and chicken in their dumplings. They want peanut butter. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I would say that Chinese food is the most adapted, hyper localized cuisine in the entire planet. Um, if you look at America, Andrew, it's a very big country. It's very diverse. A lot of different races here. Um, I would say that any Chinese restaurant in any zone is catering to a five mile radius around it. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the heavy metropolitan dense zone, Andrew, any Chinese spot in New York City is catering to the next five blocks around it. Yeah. That's why when you go to Spanish Harlem, you get Chino Latino. When mm -hmm. you go to Alphabet City, you get a certain type. And when you're in the Upper West Side, you, you might get some like Jewish Chinese American cuisine. Yeah. It's kosher. And, and everybody has their own favorite type of Chinese food that they stand by. That is almost their identity. So we have to understand that when you diss on British Chinese food, you are kind of dissing on British people. Well, when you're you kind of dissing on part of white British culture, yeah, right? same way. They, but isn't it funny that it's white people arguing about their adapted white Chinese food in America dissing on white people? British Chinese food. Yeah, because there's no Chinese people in this conversation yet. Like literally, no, I've we've not been seen, completely left out. I have not seen that many video responses or any videos or responses from an Asian person that was like, because it's not really an argument we need to get into. In a way, Andrew, is it more their culture than our culture at this point? Even though, of course, somebody who might look like us is cooking the food. Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. Do some white Americans actually identify so strongly with American Chinese food even more than I would? Like I, I would say so. They not, eat it more often. That's not the food I grew up eating. I eat. I did eat that time to time. I will but tell it was you this. Not, I always tell this story. Growing up, the white kids at school had more serious debates on whether to eat a fortune cookie or not than the Chinese kids would. I never heard the Chinese kids have that heated debate in the lunchroom. You know why? It's because the Chinese people were just like, yeah, that's all just like American Western food. So it's, it's cool. Like, we'll eat yeah, it. Whatever but you guys are doing, yeah, sure. Argue about it on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok's on by No, Chinese but then food. they're like, that's my identity. Like, I, I grow, I love the lo mein. I love the chow mein. I love the chicken chow right. mein. That's my sh And I'm like, whoa. No, you feel, that's you, man. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm more a little bit on Team America because the Panda Express does look way better than whatever they're eating. I'm not saying what they're eating is bad, though. I have to try it. Um, Andrew, last but not least, somebody came in to defend British taste buds, saying, you know, we fought a lot of wars that you guys didn't have to fight on your own soil. So we went through the ration days, and we went through days where a lot of our country did not have good ingredients. So when the Chinese came, they're working under those conditions, and maybe those are the conditions that also developed our taste buds. So don't judge us, because we fought your wars, America. <laughs> so it got into a little Yo, bit of history. I love, I'll tell you this. One thing that British people always have over America is history, man. They will bust out the history just to no end. Like, you're speaking our language. We fought the well, wars. Well, because they had to fight in World War II on the Europe side, whereas America was obviously more isolated, right? Um, anyway, Andrew, let's get into the takeaways. Andrew, why do you think this went so viral? 
is it honestly about chicken bowls and curry gravy or is this about something much deeper it's identity and here's the thing guys white people getting at other white people i like to see it but it's funny because this is not a race war thing this is not going to get racial it's not going to get problematic because you're just arguing about something like food however because it's like white on white you know it's like it's like safe for white people to get at other white right, people. It's almost like a racial or cultural battle that white people are like, I'm not worried yeah. at all. I'm going hard you, you know, in 10 out funny. of 10 in this way. It's kind of like a, a British person being like, yeah, we like British Chinese food. And the American's like, nah, man, American Chinese food is better. And then the Chinese person wants to step in and be like, hey, guys, uh, none of it is either. Hey, shut up, man. <laughs> You're not part of this. This is our food. This is our battle. Let me fight this. <laughs> right. That's why I'm just like, I'm out of it, guys. Hey. You do your thing, man. The plate looks good to me. Fine. <laughs> um, what do you think from a Chinese perspective, Andrew? So many people have all these visceral feelings about the type of Chinese food that's been adapted to them. I have a Dominican friend who was like, Papi, Papi, Dominican Chino Latino is way better than Cubano Chino. Like, Dominican Chino is better than... Cubano Chino. Basically saying the Dominican Chinese food was better than the Cuban Chinese food. And I was like, man, I, do I have a say in this? Or what, well, what's, what's my side I in I mean, this? to be honest... In a way, you don't have a, a say in this because that's not the argument. Right, because the the chuletas was built for them, right? Because we don't even know what a chuleta you is. You know, they right? have, there's this really popular chow mein dish in Guatemala. And if so, if Gua, a Guatemalan who's from there tells me like, hey, you know, that's like my favorite noodles that I ever had in my life, man. Like, I just love, that's the Guatemalan chow mein. Yeah, and but I'm it like, is interesting as a Chinese person that you always have somebody who's like from Guyana or like Venezuela look at you and just go, yo, man, I don't know. The best Chinese food is in Venezuela, fool. <laughs> but it's true, too. I, I never, gotta, I'm never offended by it, but I'm always just like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. interesting. I don't know how to contribute to this because I, I never had Venezuelan Chinese. Man. Well, anyways, guys, uh, you let me know in the comments down below, is this the great American versus British beef that we need right now. Um, is it something trivial? It's kind of fun. It's fun to talk about. But no, of course, I personally think American food is much better than British food in general. Okay, but let's give them credit. Some of those dishes look cool. Have you seen the list of ingredients on your M&Ms and your Cadbury eggs? They use 40 different ingredients that we've banned in the UK because yeah. we actually care about the long-term health of our population. Oh, do you think that on the back of our ingredients it says red 50 and blue 40 and green 70 and all these weird words and numbers? No, it doesn't. I feel it, yeah. You know what? America, I think, has some of the best food in the world, but also some of the worst food for you, too. I will say this. I think America definitely should change those standards where they, like, you know, use fructose corn syrup for everything. But I'm not going to lie. Some of that stuff, it tastes kind of good. I don't know, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. I do want to go to London. I do want to go to the UK. If I need to go into the countryside where they never even seen somebody who looks like me to try these chicken balls with the curry gravy on it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give it a fair rating. All right, everybody. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, have you seen British Chinese food? What other types of Chinese food do you really like from other regions and other localizations? Let me know because I'm curious. Leave it in the comments. All right, until next time, we out. Peace.